ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Thank you for coming to my house. You're welcome. Nice. Um, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> we had a great you, decorator. You're an actor. I am, okay. and you're an actor, so I thought we'd do the show called Actors on Actors. Excellent. Um, so listen, <laughs> I'm very aware of like how I became first aware of you, but what was the um, what was your first show on television? My first show on television was a thing called uh, TV 101. Oh, well, yeah. it, I'm sure you were like in commercials and stuff before that. Yeah, I did a bunch of commercials before that. I think my first thing ever was a public service announcement for the Constitution. <laughs> just, a, just a bunch of guys standing there, you know, I do solemnly swear. How old were you? Uh, I was probably 18, something like that. Yeah. yeah. How old were you when you did your first? My first one on TV was for a Dasani water commercial. Um, and then my first television thing was I, I did this uh, mini series on CBS called uh, Sally Hemings and American Scandal. And I played one Ooh. of S Sally Hemings. <laughs> illegitimate children mm -hmm. and I had to like ride a horse at one point and like flee the plantation you know like flee out of slavery because my character was half black and I was born into slavery I know it's a stretch and then um, I told them I was able to ride horses because I wanted the job right. but I, I I know how to ride a horse with like you know lots of well you've seen me ride a horse I've been to your ranch on the like, merry-go-round yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> so they basically just throw you on a horse with like a rope right. and um, it took me through the field like this and so you could see, like, when they, they show me the playback, they're like, okay, we need you to, like, just to work toward getting in a straight line. <laughs> and they showed me, it was like, I would just come in and out of the camera. No more Western Zoe. Right. All right, so you guys are in season... We just finished season six. Season six. Yeah. And um, I was on a show that ran for a while, too. So uh, how, how do you keep it fresh? I'm going to ask you that. I, would, I need advice. I don't know how, how you guys did, because it always felt very fresh to me. But for us, I feel that the audience doesn't want to see you be something else and doesn't want to see you change too much and grow too much. They tune in to see a very specific thing. You know, they don't want you to reinvent the wheel. So I feel like this past season, we didn't have any sort of overarching theme. We didn't have a wedding. We didn't have babies coming. We didn't have, mm -hmm. you know, there was, there was some, you know, kids were kind of thinking about going to college, but it's sort of just like life as usual. And right. I feel like that almost reset the show in a, in a way. It kind of like just brought it back to, this is just a show about families and like it doesn't have to be super crazy and it's just finding the comedy within the everyday situation. I think know? for me, it was just people sitting around talking about life. Right. You know, it was just basically conversations. There yeah. was no sort of bigger than the characters events taking place. Right, it didn't right. seem like. So I assume when uh, episodes was brought to you, it was very clear that this role was written for you. It was actually written for Schwimmer. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But he's taller than me. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. You, it's a, you auditioned, I'm sure. Um, but what made you want to play a, a version of yourself like that? You know, it's funny. Um, David Crane and Jeffrey Clarick, uh, David created Friends, and Jeffrey was an uh, exec on Mad About You and a writer on Mad About You forever, and they've been a couple. They've been together forever. Right, I did the class with them, I've which known, is how that's we right. met. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. how you know them. Um, they're a great writing team. They like two halves of the most complete person yeah and um they called me up and they said they had an idea and uh i said i'm in i said do you want to hear it first i said well, i'm sure it's going to be good yeah it's you guys right and so we got together and had lunch and they basically pitched me the whole first season with no notes beat by beat they had the whole thing in their head like yeah. they hadn't written anything yet so how do you how do you approach playing a bumped up heightened version of yourself because you know it's not just a heightened version of of, of you because I know you personally but it's a heightened version of you as as America perceives you through that character. Right. Yeah. I mean that's pretty much what it is. It's it's America's perception of a celebrity, mm -hmm. and you know namely me. And it's what people think the glamorous life of Hollywood's really like. And you know anyone that works in the industry knows that it's it's nothing right. like what it's perceived as and that's that's kind of the fun thing about it you know sort of play with these myths yeah. and, and uh, lies that are all about Hollywood you know I, I get criticism a lot um, from people you know that we play stereotypes or we, you know, we're, we're very broad and we're not representing the community well but you know I have to constantly remind myself that I'm not there to represent the entire community and I feel like you know we're, we're there to make people laugh at the end of the day the thing so. is you can't please everybody no you know, no. and you can't represent, one person cannot represent the whole community. Yeah. You know, any community, because it's very diverse. Right. You know, in any community, the yeah. gay community, the straight community, any ethnic community, whatever it is. Yeah. No one person, you can represent a fraction of that, but it's it's impossible, so don't don't worry. I think, I I've seen the show, I think you're doing great. I stopped great. worrying about it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, though. 
it's an ensemble show, mm -hmm. Modern Family, and I'm in an ensemble and came from a different ensemble, and right. I, I, I personally like that. Yeah. How do you feel about working in an ensemble? One of the, the, the nice things I read about our show very early on, which I felt when I was in the very first table read, was that we felt like a family from, from day one, like, like the very first episode to like a show that had been on, on television for a long time. And I honestly don't know how that happened. I feel like that's like totally lightning in a bottle um, because you know the very first table read we had, it was like a rehearsal before the official table read for the, the network. We wanted to sort of make sure that everyone was comfortable and, and that Sophia knew all the, the, the words in English. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she'll say things in the table read, but like, we gotta keep that because that's the most ridiculous version of that sentence ever and I'll just put it in. But uh, you know, we, we, we really clicked immediately and I felt immediately comfortable with, with, with that group and it's only grown from there. So I feel like we got very, very lucky. Do you like ever have ideas for someone else and bounce and like kind of pitch jokes? You know, it might be funny if yeah. you try this or? Occasionally, yeah. I mean, it sort of happens more in the moment with the scene. Like, well, someone will just literally throw something out without asking. And I think we have enough trust of one another that we just, We'll go with it and improvise it. But do you pitch things for one another, Eric? For example, if you if yeah. there's in the in the scene, if there's well, like a the, prop are, that's behind him, yeah. you say, "Look yeah, at that!" Or just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of stuff. yeah, that's fun. Yeah, he's actually better with that for me. Like he's always like looking for things to play with on the set, and I'm I'm all about the text. He, uh, oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but occasionally Eric will like be missing, just because he's not. A gay man, he'll he'll miss something. I'm like, look, Eric, you know what that means, right? And he's like, oh, okay. I can't think of, the, of a specific thing, but like, right. I was like, you're missing a whole color here. If, if you just let me just give you a little backstory. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice yeah. for him to have that in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah. we'll help one another. That's why I was asking about that because comedy is, you know, is very inventive a lot of times, and yeah. a lot of times you're kind of like out on a tree branch in high wind. You're thinking, is anybody buying this? Yeah. Or, yeah. And you need that support from your peers, and yeah. I think that sort of helps people's confidence in their choices sometimes. Because it's those moments where like the wackiest things happen. I think that that's where the, the heart of the show comes from. Yeah, like for me, if I if I have an idea and nobody likes it, but and they say, but you try it if you yeah, want, yeah. I'll say, forget it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if nobody thinks, because uh, you know you. That's Hopefully surrounded by people whose opinions you value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's like... That's when David and Jeffrey come in and they're like, so we have it that way, now let's <laughs> just right. try it. Let's try it our way. Yeah. Now, I know you didn't audition for, for episodes. I didn't, no. But obviously, for Friends, you auditioned, I'm sure. I auditioned my butt off for Friends. How many times did you go in? I think I, I must have gone in eight, nine times. Really? A bunch, yeah, because I was... Were you reading with different people, and were there chemistry tests? Finally, or? no, no, no. Finally, got to read with Courtney at the at the end, and then before the test, there was like a chemistry read at the end. But I went in for like casting assistants, then casting director, then producers, right. then, and then there was like a mix and match with some other potentials, and it was a long process. Well, I've been and I've been on both sides of the chemistry so read. I, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. There, there was a chemistry read that I went in for for a show. It was right after the class ended, and. Um, I went in for a read with an actress who's very famous and is on television at this time. I will not say who it is, but she did not get up from behind the table. I did my chemistry read with her behind the table with like in between two executives' heads. And like, I was like, how am I supposed to develop any Oh, you were on the, you were on the already hired side? No, she was on the already, already hired side. Oh, and you were I auditioning. Was, I was coming into the room and she stayed behind the table with all the executives and like, just did the chemistry read that one. It's like, well, this is interesting. And I just thought that's how chemistry reads worked. And then fast forward to Modern Family, and I was I was one of the first people that they that they settled on. And so I was reading with all these different Don't guys. Don't put it that way, settled on. I was one of the first people to win the job. Yes, better. Um, and uh, <laughs> I read with all of these uh, these different guys. It was like speed dating, you know? Like these guys would come right. and I'd read, read with different people for, for Cam. And it's heartbreaking because there'd be people who were so great, and then we'd bring them back for the network and they would get nervous really or they just you know had a gotten a car accident on the way there or their yeah. head's not in the game there's so it's many so variables and yeah. so having been through that process i have i have a little bit more compassion for the people on the other side of the table as well because i mean I, I think at the end of the day everyone, at that point at least at that point of the game mm -hmm. everyone just wants to find the right person and they want you to succeed and it, it was uh and you know, when eric stone street came in did you know right away I mean, you, you've met him, you know, he's not nothing I like, like his character. Nice and no, so he's nothing like that. He put this thing on, so I was like, at first I was like, oh my goodness, because I'm so, like, Mitch. I mean, I'm, I'm very, I, there's a, a very gray line between where he ends and I begin. I but with Eric, it. you don't see it? No. <laughs>
<laughs> but with Eric, it's like, you know, there's a there's a valley in between those yeah, two yeah, characters. Yeah. There was a point, though, like when he got near the end of the, the casting set, it was like the final, final, um, you know, with the network and the studio, and it was the, the, the final audition. And at one point, he did this joke that didn't that didn't really land, and so instead he, he threw in a Z-snap, and everyone in the room just went, oh, God. And <laughs> he knew it, the creatives knew it, and like we all just pretended we didn't see it. And he, to this day, was like, I thought I lost a job at that point. Oh, with the, the Z-snap. Z-snap. A Z-snap will always lose a job. Good to know. Good to know. Never Z snap. <laughs> Please do a Z snap for me right now. There you go. Actually, it looks good on you. Yeah, hey, you know, it's not my Work first Z snap. <laughs> I'll work it in there.